All right, blokes. This is my special Australian edition video for everybody on the Australian Ford forums since I've neglected to keep updates on my Cummins engine swap here. So we've started out obviously with a left-hand drive, two-wheel drive, short wide box uh, F-150, 1988. Originally had the 4.9 liter inline six engine, which was a good engine, but it's definitely not one of these and I prefer diesel over gasoline. So we bought a 91 Dodge three-quarter ton truck, took the entire drivetrain, uh, radiator, and charge air cooler out of it. As far as, uh, we've re you know, reused everything, the drive line is a hybrid Ford Dodge. I mean, it's all Spicer, but it's Ford and Dodge front and rear. Uh, luckily, the drive line tubing was the same size, so we didn't really run into issues with that. Just had to uh, take a two-piece drive shaft, remove the carrier bearing, uh, put the slip or the slip yoke bolt right into our Getrag 360 transmission that we're using. I had to spend about eight bucks to fix that. And we've got our Ford 8.8 .8 rear end. I don't know how well you can see that under there with the light, but it's held up so far. That's the extent of my exhaust system right there. Had to take the uh, factory Dodge downpipe, modify it, put some bends in it, add a piece of driveline tubing in it to lengthen it, which luckily happened to be the same diameter. We've used the Dodge slave cylinder for the clutch with the Ford Master, and it's working well, so I'm pleased with that. Still got the factory uh, half ton springs in the front. We're going to upgrade that to a little bit heavier gauge wire spring here in the near future, as soon as I get a minute. So that's pretty much, it's pretty simple. All Dodge powertrain and just modify the drive line. The uh, charge air cooler fit pretty well. Just had to modify the the uh, headlight brackets there, make a little cut there for those to fit in. So you can see that there. Pretty simple though. Gone with a Group 31 battery. Had to lower the battery tray about two inches to accommodate the bigger battery. Uh, we used the Ford starter solenoid to operate the Dodge starter. So real simple like it's supposed to work no firewall clearance issues because we set the engine further forward and utilize the electric fans rather than the uh, mechanical fan had to flip the exhaust manifold upside down to accommodate the uh, or get the turbo out of the way of the AC box there uh, so that's all there so now the only, the only problem I've had so far is the alternator is crapping out on me but hold this camera for me Matt I'm going to start her up. So there it is. Half ton Ford. 400 foot-pounds of torque, 160 horsepower, Cummins turbo diesel.